four, three, two, one. Broadcasting live from the Newsmax studio in New York City. A fusion of politics, commentary, commentary entertainment, entertainment, and sports. sports. Steve and his team bring you the latest news and opinion. The aversion that... Here is Steve Malsberg. The aversion that some hold to joining the world and embracing soccer is often weirdly tied to American exceptionalism. And once again, this year, a few anti-soccer trolls reared their ugly heads. But they really don't matter. Not when the World Cup brings so much joy to so many people. Even the President of the United States caught the game today, leading staffers in a chant of, I believe that we can win. And while he didn't win, that's ultimately all right. Because part of embracing a truly worldwide competition is accepting the fact the U.S. cannot simply assert its dominance. Turns out we have to play just like everybody else. There probably won't be 25 million American viewers for the rest of the World Cup games, but the competition is going to go on without us, and some amazing football is going to be played. And I know I, for one, will be watching. Yeah, but, 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 but I get the feeling he's going to be watching because he feels it's his duty as a citizen of the world to watch, not because he really cares about football, as he calls it. Again, to be politically correct, I guess. All right, I don't know if Dean is going to have anything to say about that. Uh, Dean Abadala, uh, we welcome in. Hey, how are you, sir? Good, how are you, Steve? I like Chris Haynes. I was just on his show a couple of weeks ago. He's a good guy. Uh, I'm not sure yeah, if he well, you know, he's a, uh, I'm sure he's I'm a good guy. What's that? Well, let me ask you, um, is, is it, is it uh, not right to root for your country? Uh, uh, is that a bad thing? No, of course not. I rooted for the U.S. all the way. I'm also half Italian, half Arab, so I, I root for Italy and Algeria. But the USA is the team I wanted to win it all, of course. And uh, I watched the last half and the extra time yesterday, and it was rooting. Tim Howard is amazing. Um, the guy can stop just about anything. He's remarkable. But unfortunately, that's it. And I probably will not watch too much more of the World Cup now that the U.S. is out, to be honest. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I you know, I, I, I get... I just get the feeling that he thinks that uh, if you watched it before and you're not going to watch it now that your country's out, that there's something wrong with you. And he's going he's gonna to do what's politically correct because he's the politically correct guy. Anyway, um, so what, let me ask you a question. Sure. Let me ask you a question. Um, have you seen the media coverage of the, uh, the death of the Palestinian uh, boy today? I didn't see any. I haven't watched news, to be honest. I was out, but I, I saw, of course, oh. online articles, articles about it, yeah. All right. Well, I, I just well, well then it then it's kind of moot, uh, and we can move on. But I, I was just a little, you know, not taken aback because I expect it. Uh, <clears throat> uh, you know, I've lived through I've lived through j j the so-called Janine massacre. I've lived through the uh, the uh, Palestinians putting the kids in the ambulance, then taking them out and then putting them back in. Uh, you know, so I, I I've, I've lived through a lot of it. But uh, to, to to call this a retribution killing or to assume it's a retribution killing when there's absolutely no proof yet because the investigation hasn't even hardly started, uh, certainly hasn't been completed, um, could just as well have been killed by Palestinians as by Israelis. I just find it, not, again, not bizarre, but unfortunate. Uh, you know, I, I think the investigation will reveal what it reveals. And, you know, let's hope there's a thorough investigation and they bring to justice the people who killed uh, this Palestinian and, of course, the three Israelis who were killed, which are horrific. Uh, it's indefensible, and I hope they bring to justice the, the people who killed those three young Israeli teenagers. All right, then. We, so far, we agree on everything just about. We rooted for the USA, and we, we, we believe that all the perpetrators in both the killings should be brought to justice. So, all right, let's move on to something we'll probably disagree on, uh, uh, Dean, and that is the, um, you, you went after uh, the, the no-fly list. Now, I know that there, there are, I, as a matter of fact, I have a friend whose name which, by the way, doesn't sound anything like a, a, a Muslim name. He's Italian. It doesn't even sound Italian. Um, his name was on it, and of course it wasn't him, and he had all kinds of problems. But is it the no-fly list, especially now we find out there's new kinds of explosives that the TSA is getting prepared to enhance their security at airports about? Shouldn't we have a no-fly list where there are red flags that go up when certain names are, are ready to board a plane? I, well, Steve, we're going to agree here, too. It's not that I don't think there should be a no-fly list. What I think is that I agree with the federal court decision from a couple of weeks, about a week ago in Oregon, um, that the procedure itself, especially for American citizens, that's all I'm focused on, frankly, is American citizens are permanent residents. Those are the ones who are entitled to constitutional protection. 
that there's a meaningful procedure in place. Because right now, if you're on it, they don't tell you to show up to the airport. Then they don't even tell you, the government does not have to tell you the reason you're on the no-fly list. So while they have a, re a redress provision to get off the no-fly list, because they don't tell you why you're on it, it's very hard to counter it. So the federal court said they gave Homeland Security until July 14th to come up with a meaningful procedure that's clear. So if you're on it, like your friend was, and I have a friend whose last name was Wilson, white as can be, American guy, he was on it too because somehow his name matched someone else. Um, that these people don't know why they're in it, and they go there's a runaround sometimes, literally for years, as the court case said. So I, I think, and I even fault the Obama administration for six years for continuing this and not putting in more transparency. When President Obama came into office talking about transparency, so I think here we might actually agree as well because I'm criticizing the Obama administration for lack of transparency on the no-fly list rules. That's what my article is really about. But but but, but what good is a no-fly list if you're going to tell people in advance that they're on it? And if you're going to tell them why they're on it, let's say let's say there's a terrorist out there. The guy's right. name is on the list. Maybe maybe the terrorist doesn't know we're on to him. Maybe he's an American citizen. Uh, and you know, this way we we catch him at the airport. Why should we have to tell him why he's on it and 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 warn him in advance that he better stay away because he's on it? I think honestly, if we know someone and they're on the no-fly list because they're actually a terrorist, a real terrorist. Um, and that guy can buy tickets, we can probably track that person and arrest them. I think that's the reality of the situation. There were 13 plaintiffs in this lawsuit, including four U.S. military veterans who served in our military proudly and then could not fly in a plane, and most of them weren't Arab American at all. There was no connection whatsoever. So if there's a procedure where it's clear, like if you're on it by mistake, this is how you can get off it, you can have a proper showing and a proper procedure, it's due process, that's the whole issue it's about, I'm fine with a no-fly list, um, but I don't actually think terrorists, I think if they're a real known terrorist, we're going to catch them. We're going to catch them before they board, I hope, or before they even buy a ticket. Uh, so I, I think telling them is part of due process. Well, that's the issue we're dealing with. All right, well, again, if, 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 there's, a, if there's someone on a no-fly list that we, that we know for sure is a terrorist and we do get them, uh, then it's sure, not going to. Then him being on the no-fly sure, list isn't going to really matter anyway. Right, let me let let's go to uh, Rick Santorum. Uh, Rick yeah. Santorum is uh, is the president of Echo Light Studios, and yes. uh, he's made several movies. They're they're you know they're very uh, uh, religiously based movies and and traditionally right. based movies. And now he's making a movie about the Hobby Lobby case. And yes. uh, you wrote a piece at the uh, Daily Beast, uh, which uh, the headline says uh, Rick Santorum's Hobby Lobby horror movie uh, yes. and you have a problem with the fact that he stresses christianity too much in it is that uh, explain what your problem is with this movie about well, hobby lobby at the outset let me say i am so much happier rick santorum is making movies and not making policy so i can at least applaud that and i hope forever he makes films and never public policy again and i will defend his right to make films um the article is a little comedic i mean i tell you it's from a guy who brought you such hits as our laws must agree with the Bible, gay sex is the equivalent of a man having sex with a dog, and contraception is not okay. Now it brings his new documentary, One Generation. In it, well, I mean, he, I never, he, never said that, he never said that homosexuality is like having sex with dogs. I, I'm not going to take quotes out of context here and let you get away with attributing it to him. Let's, let's talk about why, what your problem is with the Hobby Lobby movie. Well, the mo well right now... All that's been released is the trailer. They released the trailer on Monday at the same time the Hobby Lobby decision came out. So all I can see so far is the trailer. In the trailer... And by the so way, it's called, it's called one, gener one Generation Away, The Erosion of Religious Liberty. Right, and it's all about America. It's about losing religious liberty in our country right now. And it has men in suits cutting down a huge cross. Then it has images of Nazi Germany, which if you're going to bring up the Nazis and you're not dealing with the Holocaust, it's a little ridiculous. I'm going to be honest with you. I think you're diluting the, the, his, the horrors of the Holocaust if you bring up Nazis when it's not about that. But in any event, that, that's his, his view as a, a making a movie, okay, I get it. In it, though, all he talks about is religious liberty. All you see are, are images of Christianity. There are other religions in America. Religious, religious, we should fight for liberty for all faiths. Christians should, of course, fight for their faith. So should Jews, Sikhs, Muslims, Hindus, anyone who wants to practice. So it was kind of weird to me that it was only about Christianity. Why not other faiths? Well, 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 but he's, but, but he's making a movie. 
He, and, and you're telling me the images he shows in, in the trailer, and you haven't seen the whole movie. It's if one's least, talking yes. about the, wait, wait, if, but if one's talking about the erosion of religious liberty in America or anything about religious liberty in America, and they choose to show things or focus upon things, so are they going to have to talk about Buddhists and, and, and Muslims and Jews and Christians and, and, and uh, right on that, they're going to have to co cover oh, yeah. every single religion or you won't be happy? No. You can do, he can do whatever he wants. He's making a film. He's not implementing public policy. It's right, different. but I'm talking about your problem with it. Right. Well, that was part of my problem with it. My problem is that how come you don't talk about any other faiths in there? If you're going to talk about religious liberty in America, uh, Christians do have issues. Uh, certainly Muslims have issues. The simplest thing, just trying to build places of worship. There's a controversy in northern Jersey right now. It's nothing with ground zero with a town saying we don't want a mosque here. I mean, not the whole town, people in the town. So religious liberty should be for all. I mean, that's the whole point. If the and, and by the way, by the way, people people object to the building of of, of synagogues and churches True. in in True. certain True. residential areas as well. So it's not only um, you, you, I don't know the case you're talking Mosque. about, but it's not unique it's to mosques that people object to the building of those facilities. And that's and to me that makes it a better film when you show that show people protesting against a synagogue, synagogue. show them uh, protesting against a Sikh temple. Or, or All right, Dean, Dean I, got a, I got a deal for you. I'm up, I'm up against the clock, but I got it. We, we, we had a, a very tame conversation by your past standards today. Uh, I'm glad for my blood pressure's sake. But when you make your movie, you could include or exclude whatever you want, and so could sure. Rick, and I know you agree with that. Dean, we'll speak I, to you soon. Dean Abadala, ladies and gentlemen. We're coming back with the panel. Don't go away.